Well hello there guys and girls, my name's Mikey, welcome back to my room for another tutorial and today we're going to be continuing on drawing our musculature for anime and manga characters. These are for bigger, more hench, bodybuilder fighter types and really kind of the rules that you can apply to them. And again, this kind of covers cartoon and illustrative styles as well. Now last episode we did drawing a character from the front, the main trunk and torso and arms. This time around we're going to have a go at just describing really over muscly legs and back for your characters. So what I'm going to do is just draw on some super cheap printer paper as ever. I've got a few sheets down if you guys want to follow along at home. Super cheap disposable mechanical pencil as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and just imagine we've got some kind of a rough hip line here. I'm just going to focus on the legs for this character. Uh, here's our rough center line for the weight of um, this particular body and maybe this is vaguely where the floor is. I'm keeping these bits these bits light because they're not too important but I will um, darken my pencil strokes when we actually do the forms which is coming up now. So imagine I've got myself some kind of hips torso to a character as usual. I'm using the building blocks method um, so this kind of squished ellipse is vaguely to represent the hips and then I'm going to have uh, one leg come off what will be kind of you know a ball and socket joint somewhere inside of the hips, vaguely kind of straight down here. With the way that the leg works, it's never a perfectly straight line, but something like that to start off with. This is kind of my guiding gesture line. And I'm going to imagine that the other leg of this character is just coming off a little bit to the side, just for the sake of variation. Now, as we've talked about before with our kind of building blocks method, you want to just map out a few things. I'm going to go vaguely halfway, in fact, just above halfway to kind of put a line which will indicate where the kneecaps will be and that means that the bottom of the legs will stop around about here and this area below will probably uh, be indicating the feet. So because this isn't a fit tutorial I'm going to very roughly just put in what could be a foot shape or a boot or something like that. I'll worry about that later and in a really similar vein this leg is out to the side so it might be a bit further back. I'm going to very lightly just put in what might be the tip of a boot or foot shape down there and again focus back up here. So first thing to do is just envision those hips because the legs need to come off of something as usual. So I'm going to go ahead and just give these a little bit more form imagining that as that kind of fairly buckety hips shape. Not here to win any kind of again awards over uh, style and design for this particular tutorial but just to kind of talk about those muscle groups talk a little bit about the anatomy of what's going on because some very basic anatomy knowledge is key for drawing uh, your characters I think especially if they're going to be a bit bigger a bit more gym buff and so on so here's our center line going up off a page maybe there's a belly button somewhere up there we're not going to worry about it and as for this leg coming down we know our kneecap's going to be vaguely about here I'm just going to throw in a circular shape and on this character, ever so slightly further up, because of that leg's just swinging out a bit, got a kneecap over there. Now, because we're drawing um, a much thicker hench character, I'm now going to go in with some fairly confident kind of sausage shapes to go in to express that muscle. So off of that joint of the hip as we come around here, I'm going to swing out, and I'm just going to create a smooth curve that comes right in like so. Let's make that nice and dark so you guys can see it. And then on this side as well, it's going to be another kind of curve. This one on the inside of the leg is going to come up a bit like this. And then there's going to be another bit that actually comes in a bit like this. So I'm bringing this up to the middle, obviously leaving that thigh gap for the privates in the middle. And then all of the rest of this kind of shape goes up there. And in a very similar vein, I'm imagining that this part of the line now is actually representing the front of the shin bone going down here. And I'm also just going to kind of just think about this kind of expanding shape here, like a kind of a big eye drop kind of shape that comes down the bottom like so. And then I'm just going to use some smaller lines to bring that up to kind of represent where this is connecting down to the shin, the foot, coming up the back of the leg up the Achilles um, but then expanding out to be all of the musculature. So what's going on here is that this big area here we're expressing is kind of supposed to be um, like 
I guess, say your lats and uh, your main area of your thighs, you've got two big muscle groups, one that kind of comes down on the left and one on the right. But the direction of these muscles is kind of like this, basically. It's kind of sweeping in here. So what you can always do is remember that as you get to the knee, and we're going to throw some shadows in to express what's going on, but as you get to uh, the knee of this character, um, you might have one section of the muscles bulge over the top here, and they might do the same as they come down over here. And when they do, on the inside edge, you're going to imagine that up from the central inner part of this thigh, you've got this kind of muscle group that sweeps down here on the inside edge, and then bulges out a bit down here, and bulges outside the kneecap zone to actually connect everything together down here. So past the kneecap, down into the bottom part of the leg. So that's going to reach down into the calves, which we're shaping up by this kind of teardrop shape. But over on the outside edge as well, I'm going to follow this line down. And again, I'm actually just going to let a straight line bring a load of stuff in around that kneecap as well. And this, which I've kind of indicated as a kneecap, is what I'd actually describe as being the top of a kneecap. And what I'm going on about here is that the bottom part of that kneecap is some stuff that's going on there. And the way that we usually show that for kind of really thick characters is maybe we're going to just drop a bit of that into shadow when we come to kind of finish things up, just to show that this is the tip point and that's sweeping back underneath into the shin bone, like here and kind of like so there. Now again, these um, side bits can go over the front. So these are kind of things that we're going to see from the front edge and then the line from the back, that sweeping curve is going to come down and be the carve that we all want it to be as it goes into the foot, which we're just going to indicate its shape a little bit somewhere down there, like so. And I think in this example, I'm probably just going to bring that foot down a little bit further because I think just the way I'm sitting, I'm a little bit foreshortened. So let's sweep this down even more. There we go. Let's just have a look at this line and this one. Yeah, I do want this uh, shin to come down to about here. And then we can start to sweep that foot out from there. But really a similar story. So I'm just going to bring that line up here to marry this nice and smoothly. And then now that we're down here, here's our joints and bones and things. And here's our foot. So always a good idea. Start with your guidelines. Don't be scared to change them if they need a little bit of changing. Only because I personally have just popped that foot up a little bit too high. Easily resolved. Back down here. Some kind of boot shape. Whatever that needs to be. So let's make all of that our shin area. And then we've just got that a little bit more equally measured out, I noticed. So similar thing up on this side as well but i'm just going to come back to this leg really quickly and just separate out with a bit of shadow what might be going on up here we've got the privates genitals then we've got up where everything becomes the hip and you've got like your stomach muscles abdomen and things going on there that's absolutely fine down this edge we are going to indicate that there's a muscle group kind of going on here which i'm going to throw some shadow in when we uh, go into some time lapse Similar thing going down here. Just wait till we time lapse and watch how I shade that in. But essentially we've got ourselves fairly thick calf point off round here. Fairly thick leg mass up round here as well. And then down off towards the bottom, go look for a foot tutorial. Off on this side, doing a really similar thing then is gonna be that inside sweep firstly. Now the way I'm going to think about this is a bit different because this leg is going out. We're going to get more of this zone here, this inside muscle, uh, kind of where everything pulls in towards the groin, coming into play. So I'm actually going to sweep out quite a nice bit there, like so. And then I'm going to just think of this whole thing as that big sausage shape starting up here. So here's that line going in and down, meeting in around about where we've got that kneecap. Let's just smooth that in. And then on the outside edge, off of this hip curve, we've got the rest of the leg sweeping down and in like so. Just like that. And then again, on this kneecap area, we can show that oh, there's these two big areas of muscle, big area up here, and this other really big area around here like so. 
and again with this part of the leg coming down here I'm just gonna gently take away from where that leg is again make sure that this has got a really good equal distance before it becomes a foot so that's really going to be a bit more somewhere like so and then with this part as well a really similar story that kneecap uh, continues on down here we might have a line here and a line here to indicate but really the main things going on is I'm underneath the kneecap joint I'm imagining the bottom part of this nice big teardrop as well just to kind of go out and around like there and then I'm just going to bring all of this area in to show that this muscle is supporting the joint on that side it's doing a really similar job on this side and then now everything else is actually curving out to be that part of the calf down following the main shin line as we come in and it's coming up on this side and doing of course a really similar thing as well let's get that calf in and down and around this version of the leg is much more this way so to speak that kind of legs going just back a little bit maybe this version is just a bit more towards us I'm just indicating that by putting this kind of uh, curve to show you what's going on and that inside edge there I might have gone just a little bit too wide on the old thigh gap I'm just going to show the underside of the bum in each instance but just imagine this is one of those really big bodybuilding poses where they over accentuate it and you're fine so let's go down here let's get an ankle bit in here for the foot which is going to come down maybe something like this and let's just indicate roughly the shape of this one as well should be have high top arch there and then kind of the end toes area there and again I'm just going to come down with this line and just talk about these curves gentle sweep out nice flow here a lot of the mass on the inside edge by the knee here and here is actually going down in towards the bottom. You've got your inside area of legs, which is often shown as being a little bit separate by a line here and a line here. These areas under here, I'm going to throw into all sorts of shadow. And then it just sweeps down teardrops for the big calves as you follow the shins down as well. So let's just go over here and have got some really big stumpy legs they're almost perfect I just want them to be a little bit close together and let's have a really quick look at a character's back so up on this side I'm just gonna pop a head on really quickly doesn't matter too much we're not gonna really turn this into a character that's not what we're here for today it's all about those muscle groups but I'm just gonna try to imagine what's going on with the head just so I've got it for the sake of scale like that and then let's go one two three four let's go about here so I'm gonna go shoulder line here somewhere like that and then I'm gonna go hip lines vaguely down here for this character and I'm just gonna throw in the spine and we're gonna talk about the back then so as ever this is a generic head up here please don't worry about it the spine is connecting somewhere there to the base of the skull and we get to go in and just put in our general circles again so here's our rough giving our character some kind of chest circle and our very rough lips for representing the hips which are gonna kind of map out a little bit differently from behind and again we're thinking about the fact that if we're gonna start wide around the shoulders and go in we're gonna go out again at those hips we're vaguely thinking about that hourglass situation at all times so what you've got going on around the back are quite a few things with your extra muscly characters as we talked about in the last tutorial you might go ahead and draw them in with just very large generous circles for these different points so here's our shoulders or shoulder circles really rough really generous and in terms of the muscle groups uh, you've got the main part of the back up here and this guy is going to be sweeping down quite confidently it's all the muscles that come up the back of the neck it's the shoulders themselves and that's like a curve that then sweeps down towards the outer part of the uh, shoulders which are like the deltoid area this is all the muscles of the shoulders and the back 
and then the back muscles themselves you've got this zone that's basically like a big sweep here for your character so that's going to be something that helps you kind of map out where you're going to be putting a few things now because we're going to dive into the shoulders I'm going to really quickly just pop maybe an arm yeah why not coming down off each side I'm trying to make this tutorial to be relatively quick as we go on and in this instance I'm going to just pop in our elbow joints and then hands will be somewhere around here and again we're just going to map these out by using those generous circular shapes so I might just go like this just for the sake of kind of putting in a sausage or a balloon for that part of the arm a really similar thing here that's going to go way way thinner at one end down towards the wrist and a really similar thing over here as well let's just loosely map out our really muscular characters by putting in some very generous kind of circles and balloon shapes we can start to think about some muscles and where they're going because of that so for example we can take this shoulder circle and bring that out as a curve over the top much like we've done for the front that kind of then hooks down and around to be the outside edge of the shoulder like so so let's just go back over to this side and do a really similar thing curve over the top and then hook round and in I'm really giving some really big shoulders to this character even at the rear and what's going on here is that these shoulders these kind of deltoids um, even at the back the posterior deltoids I think follow this kind of sweep here and meet up in the back so they come up here and meet back up in there and then what we're going to be seeing from this side of things when we look at the back are then going to be um, kind of the lats mostly there's all sorts of muscles just about here and just about here that pull everything in as well but what you can often do with your characters is really just kind of indicate that you've got muscles up and around the shoulder blades in areas along here depending on what you're indicating as well as um, areas of the main neck muscles and back muscles kind of just pinching and showing a bit of shadow up there depends how you want to shade it up and mainly coming down here these lats are just two big sweeping shapes that follow that triangle form that Dorito shape so I'm just gonna follow this curve right in here and imagine we've got some big old lats just doing their thing here and really similar right up here really big lateral muscles for the back as well these are the muscles that help you do your pull-ups and things like that so We've got this main zone here, muscles up by the top, big shoulders here, and then we're gonna just sweep in some lats there. As we come down towards the lumbar region, what you tend to get are two main trunks of muscle that go on either side of the spine. And around here is where we've got our hips again, and if we're thinking about that hip bucket tilted forward shape, uh, when we just kind of map out our characters in general, what that means from this side is that we're just going to be seeing a bum. So again, even with a big muscly character, I'm going to be going big and uh, really generous on the curves and circles that I'm going to put in for this bum. And we're going to really quickly talk about the kind of two ways you can have a bum on a muscle building character. Now I did say in the last tutorial, um, when we were doing the front of a character, that uh, bodybuilding and uh, weight gaining and stuff can play around with your hormones and a lot of uh, female bodybuilders tend not to have um, natural breasts. Um, somebody did get in the comments and say one of the main things surrounding that is for competitive bodybuilding people are dropping their fat percentage and dropping their body water which is also what kind of kills off your boobs a bit so that's where you get a lot of um, fake ones out there as well. So similar thing with the bum. A lot of the nice shape of a bum uh, can be just attributed to fat and the bum muscles or what I should call the glutes um, are much more central here and here than they are around the side so some muscly characters you can get like a bit of a, a dimple shape in here on this edge and this edge as it's the glutes here that kind of bunch up and do all of the work not really on the outside edge now whether or not you want to put that or you want your character to maybe just do a range of really good bum exercises for keep the whole thing in a kind of pleasing slightly more spherical shape is down to you but something to be aware of the glutes a bit more centralized at the bum if you ever just like squeeze your bum cheeks really hard it kind of pushes everything into the middle that's what's going on and then up here as well we've got um, the side part of the abs that kind of come in and the obliques which again I'm just gonna 
map that shape up here just make sure it meets in with the body like so and then now that I've got the underside of these bum curves again I'm just gonna have like a leg off down there and down there so down over the hip and then let's just sweep out and then probably stop about there and then a really similar thing over here now on the back part of the legs down here what you can show very slightly at the top if you want to are the hamstrings and the main part is that you've got two big ones that just go down the back of the leg you can imagine a space here and a space here that I'm trying to indicate just a bit for the hammers and then similar off this leg which I've just kind of indicated is coming off the hip and then just going out a bit more in that direction just cap that off hamstrings again maybe just a line here and a line here if you wish again it's all about how much of a muscle you want to show on a character so we've got the big shoulders and the big hips to match for a female character you can't tell too much from the back without like a load of flowing hair that this is supposed to be a woman but you do still get a few tips you've got these nice big lats you might get like a little bit of rib coming up the underside depending on what they're up to and all of the muscles of the back are still kind of showing these main sections so if we're just going to go to the back part of the arm fairly simple you're looking mostly at the tricep so we're just going to go right down here imagine that it meets yep right on this elbow joint which becomes a bit of a, a focal point for loads of the muscles in the arms here and here and I'm just going to again stick with those nice big circles so triceps on the inside back of your arm are fine just like so brings everything in if you imagine that this is a middle section there and then when it's your forearm you've got all sorts of muscles that do uh, the movements of your hand and your rotation and so on um, but you can kind of just imagine that really as long as you've got the elbow joint being a solid prominent thing you can get like one or two lines in depending on how stringy you want those forearm muscles to look but again don't worry about them too much unless you're doing like a really uh, lean wiry character in which case then those things kind of become more veiny and they pop out and so on little bit of bicep on the inside edge of the arm why not and then just same on here I'm going to just map to this elbow joint elbow shape tricep of two halves that we're looking at from the rear little bit of bicep on the inside edge everything's kind of joining together sweep down nice and wide as we go into the main trunk of the forearm good joint line down there just imagine this character is you know bunching their hands and fists and there we go again probably could do with making the head a little bit bigger obviously if we're drawing a character that actually has like you know a haircut on there you might be seeing something like this flowing off into the wind that would probably give it a bit more uh, size and scale I might just keep that ever so slightly that's just a loose mapping indicator but when it comes to the back, get your basic shapes in as ever. You've got your spine line weight. You've then got your main areas to think about. Those big shoulders meet up to these big arms. All of this underside is kept in by the lats, this big sweeping triangular shape. That's what gets that Dorito shape for characters. And obviously you've got the shoulders where you do all your shrugs and bits over at the top. So um, what are these? The traps, there you go, the trapezius muscles. Uh, then you've got going down to the glutes area and the hamstrings try to work out how much you do or don't want to show about your musculature however what i'm going to do is jump into a time lapse right now and i'm going to just darken the lines i'm going to keep and put some shading around these other areas as well just to really make them stand out and i'll be right back at the end <laughs> And welcome back guys so yeah there we hopefully have it as you can see when it comes to those muscular female characters with those legs you've got to get big and chunky big sausagey kind of shapes for your 
building blocks and then have a little bit of a think about the split of the musculature and what kind of shadows that's going to throw. Obviously I had to put some clothes on these characters for YouTube and just throw this leg back into shadow because this top part of the calf is coming, uh, this top part of the thigh I should say is coming towards us. This bottom part of the calf is slightly away, it's a slight step motion even though it's slightly wide apart and with this character here when we're talking about the back with those female characters you still need to address the glutes whether or not that's kind of all kind of squeezed in or still following this kind of more pleasing circular curve but they're still going to be a very big element for the female characters don't neglect those chunky thighs on the hips make sure they're down and they kind of even out uh, width wise with the shoulders of the character so that somewhere in there you're still dealing with this hourglass thing sweeping in and sweeping out, sweeping into the middle and out again. You can keep that waist uh, relatively thin depending on the type of character of course you're drawing. Every uh, uh, body type has like a million variations on top of that. And remember you've got your big sweeping shape for your lats underneath here. These are the guys that are pulling everything in. Uh, you've got the really big area over the top of the shoulders here and off the back of the shoulder blades I've just used loads of little shadows little areas to kind of show how all of the musculature of the back fits around the shoulder blades and pulls those shoulders back if need be and the fact that as you get just above your lumbar region you're kind of working in shadow because that's where you have a natural um, arch to your back. Things like that tend to be slightly over accentuated in like anime and cartoon styles but it is in there which is just why I drop this part of the back a little bit into shadow as well. Similar vein for the back of the arms, uh, just get your triceps in, I've got the edge of the biceps in the front moving down to the wrists. We have done completely separate arm tutorials which is why I'm not spending too much time here, uh, but really just to show that when you've got those more hench women, uh, they can still clearly be women, even if you're looking at one from behind, as long as you kind of do the right things about the body proportion shape and the areas over the bum. As for the legs at the front, to be fair, this could be fairly gender neutral depending on what you want to draw on top of it, but I do hope that that gives you a bit of a feel and kind of wraps things up across this and the last tutorials for drawing bodybuilding women or muscle or hench characters. In the future there will be another tutorial where we um, do like completely absurdly muscular characters like completely ballooned out like bad guys or crazy science experiment types so we'll get into that further down the line but let me just take this delicious opportunity to stop and say guys if you've liked this tutorial that's bloody great I really hope you found it useful make sure you click that subscribe button somewhere down there it really helps me out and means that you stay tuned for when I have more tutorials and other reviews and art things in the future but the only reason why I'm able to make these free on YouTube is because of those delicious Patreon on Patreon. It's with the help of a whole handful of people who just put a little bit in and get loads of extra art rewards that we're able to keep going. So an extra big shout out to Nbag, Rombly, Johnny Y, Pushing Since 93, Team Over Bemo, Jorgen A, Yendrick H, Garrett C, Brownie Wars, Azek, Artorius777, Ryder 2KX, Angry Hermit, Ray C, The Clamps, Joe R, Kyrie Art, Retriate, Michael S, Trent H, Adam D, Matt H, Luke C, Wes B, Carlos R, Connor M, Raymond B, Julio Felix O, Jamie, John Hall V, Alex, Gyro P, Trent P, Simon B, Taylor S, Jake Y, Live on Kill, Isido Tori, Rory A, Hamong Chi L, Thomas C, Ollie, Garrett, Cogley, for Cartoon Cynic, Christian L, Minion 715, ICZ, Adam T, Zahaki, and Kurt D. Those guys, amongst others, are some of the higher tier patrons on Patreon. As ever, more people are popping over to check what's going on, which is absolutely great. Remember, you can just kind of turn up and put in a couple dollars if you want to just have access to loads of other stuff. And of course, it really helps me out and makes all of this happen. So again, guys, I hope you have a bloody lovely week. Get into the comments section below if you want particular tutorials or something's not clear or we need to cover some other topics. I, of course, put these together based on what you guys want to see. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.